Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now we all make mistakes in life and we all have our regrets. I have to say that the most recent of mine was probably buying this. This is a so-called gaming PC that I purchased on the Facebook marketplace for just a few pounds and I'm told that it hasn't been turned on in quite some time, roughly 10 years. Now I didn't know this until I went to pick it up so today I thought we'd open it up, take a look at what 10 years of dust probably looks like, try and work out the specs of this machine and see if it still fires up. Of course then we'll put it through its paces, test it and see what it can do in a few games, whether it's even capable of that at all. I can see from the back of the system that it does have a graphics card installed, though what that GPU is I really do have no idea, along with the processor and along with the amount of RAM. Before we get started, I just want to say I hope you guys don't mind the slightly longer videos recently. My upload schedule's been a bit all over the place. I've been so busy outside of this whole YouTube thing. Um, so everything's been a bit hectic at the moment. So I thought when I go two or three days without an upload, why upload a five minute video? Because it can seem a little lazy. So I thought make longer videos. Hopefully they're a bit better as well if you guys like them. And uh, yeah, so let me know if you don't mind these longer uploads or whether you want me to go back to slightly shorter videos but of course not every video in the future is going to be at least 10 or 15 minutes long. But without further ado let's crack open this PC, see what's inside, give it a bit of a clean up, talk about the specs and then try to game on it. So before opening it up I wanted to see if this thing turned on and while it did power up after pressing the power button all I heard was a long continuous beep. I wasn't sure what this meant so I thought it best to take it outside, open it up and remove any dust and dirt first before trying to find a solution to our no posting problem. Externally I think this build still looks quite good except from the white DVD RW drive which looks a bit out of place but we'll deal with the cosmetics later. My initial attempt at removing the side panel failed and I assumed that maybe it was stuck in place with a decade's worth of grime but it turns out that it was locked shut thanks to this nifty little security system here. Good job the original keys are all still included otherwise we may have never been able to open up. Ah. Never mind. Despite this thing sitting under someone's stairs for a good few years, there wasn't as much grime around the case to deal with as I thought. That may have been because most of it had congregated around the CPU fan. Just in case you're eating your breakfast or dinner, I won't show you a close-up. Okay, maybe just a little close-up. This may be why the system wasn't booting up, so I decided to strip the system down entirely and clean everything before trying again. At least then we can get a closer look at the individual parts as well. The first thing to do was remove the graphics card. After pulling that out of the machine I discovered it was a GeForce 7900GS with a fan that was completely clogged up with filth. The best way to clean PC components is with a can of compressed air and the bigger parts can also be dusted with a brush. After cleaning up the card it was time to look into its specs. Launching in the autumn of 2006, this ASUS GeForce 7900GS was aimed at the mid-range market and cost 200 American dollars to buy new, placing it between the 7600GT and the 7900GT. This model features a 450MHz core clock, 256MB of DDR3 VRAM and supports up to DX9, meaning most of the latest games are a no-go, but we'll see how it performs later on. Also featured in this PC is a 320GB hard drive, ample room back in 2006, a Creative Labs Sound Blaster SB0730 sound card, as well as an ASUS P5ND motherboard, which was a pretty good board back in its day, and offers support for pretty much any and all 775 CPUs, including the Core 2 Quad and Extreme series. It even offers SLI support too, and can handle up to 8 gigs of DDR2 RAM. We've also got a 500 watt Octogen PSU in here, though I don't think it's a quality unit at all, and was very loud when powering the PC on, though it was hard to hear over the initial beeping. But now it was time to deal with this. I would have spent half an hour or so happily cleaning it, but as I removed it the wind decided to blow some of the dust into my mouth, and well that was just it for me. I had to deploy the Diawa technique, dump it and walk away. I hate throwing away things that still work, but this was just too much, and it could be the reason our PC refused to boot. 
instant overheating. With the heatsink off, I was able to determine the processor model, which was a Core 2 Duo 6600, basically a two-core version of the Q6600. This 65W 2.4GHz processor launched in Q306 for I believe around $300, US though I could be a little out. Something that hadn't occurred to me until now was this sticker, detailing a model number. This indicates that this machine is a pre-built assembled by a company called Mesh, who are based in London and are still trading today. After researching it, I found a Hexus review of a similar spec system that would have cost just over £1,000, about $1,300 today, and it even won itself a good value award. So with everything cleaned up, the system reassembled and the DVD drive professionally painted, or blasted with a rattle can by myself, it was time to see what this mid-range to high-end system that hasn't seen any action in years could do, if of course it wanted to turn on. Well, it turns out that it did. I was a little sceptical that just cleaning the dust out would fix it, but it goes to show just how important regular cleaning and maintenance of your PC is. Why this thing was bought then only used for a year or so I don't know, but from what I understand the previous owner I picked this up from was keen to upgrade very regularly. Because they had left most of their old files behind, I decided to completely wipe and install Windows 7 instead, especially since the Vista version installed was 32-bit. With that done, let's see what it can do in its otherwise unmodified state when it comes to gaming. So, because this is an older system, it won't be able to handle new releases, especially given the DirectX 9 graphics card. I started off with a relatively easy to run title, Minecraft. Here I switched the graphics to fast and reduced the view distance and render chunks. Unfortunately, while the game seemed to be recording a respectable average frame rate, you can probably see that it's plagued with stutter, which made it rather unplayable. This occurred no matter the resolution or in-game settings, and may have been primarily down to the single 2GB stick of RAM installed, as neither the CPU or GPU were running at full load throughout my 15 minute playtime. GTA San Andreas ran, well, like this. Every single time I started the game it simply froze at the opening options menu and jammed the whole system up, leaving me to resort to either Ctrl Alt Delete or just holding the power button in until it switched off. Either way, San Andreas refused to work on this PC. This system has essentially sort of acted as a time capsule over the last few years, keeping these older components locked inside and preserving a look at what a mid-range gaming system used to look like. In CSGO, I was able to get the game running with at least 30 frames per second by reducing the settings all the way. And I mean all the way. 640x480 resolution was the best option here, with the advanced graphical options set to their lowest. Again, there was some stutter. Actually, on second thoughts, when I say some stutter, I meant a terrific amount of stutter because... There really was quite a lot of frame drops and freezes here and there. But fortunately I'm terrible at this game, so I wasn't extremely put off by the frame drops. The original Mafia also ran quite well with the low quality preset enabled at 720p. As you can see we've got the distance fog enabled too for the best results, but this meant a solid 60 frames per second throughout, which was a result I was pretty happy with, and one that meant we could probably have afforded to turn a few things up here and there, maybe even being able to set the resolution to 1080p. The same applied to another slightly older title, The Elder Scrolls Morrowind. An absolute classic in the series, this still runs quite differently varying from hardware to hardware. For example I've used worse systems that have performed better, and better systems that have performed worse. But at 1024x768 here with any sliders turned up to around medium, we were able to maintain a pretty consistent frame rate. Also, by some miracle, we were able to run 2013's Tomb Raider. Sure, I had to reduce everything to low settings and use 800x600 resolution, but the game did run even if in some cases a lot of the scenery was missing, or graphical artifacts decided to clog up the screen and totally distract from the action. Never mind though, because this title I expected to massively fail really surprised me. But can it run Crisis? I hear you ask. Well, at low settings, yes, it certainly can. 
The opening level at 720p ran with about 45 frames per second, with a mixture of low and medium settings, so while it didn't look that great, it ran fine most of the time. But remember I did say most. As you make your way further into the jungle and eventually come across some of the later levels with more enemies and on-screen action, the game will slow down a bit and drop to the mid to low 20s, and it will really be quite hard to play among all the stutter and frame drops that you'll likely be experiencing on a combination of this CPU and GPU as well as that 2 gigs of RAM. Crisis never did really run well on a lot of older systems, hence the whole can it run Crisis thing. Overall though we've resuscitated this PC, we've brought it back from the dead, it was once a dust clogged grey for old components but now we've managed to clean it up, fire it up once more, install a brand new fresh operating system on it and that honestly is a great feeling if you take something old and broken, refurbish it and get it going again. Especially when it's a system like this that because of the motherboard does present a few upgrade options as well. So guys there we have it. Who knows how long this PC would have continued to sit under someone's stairs if I hadn't have rescued it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you did leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully as always I'll see all of you in the next one.